So this is an important topic. You know, God places on my heart for something to feel, but how to deal with guilt or shame. Guilt, the fact or state of wrong, especially against moral or penal law, feeling of responsibility or remorse for some offense, crime, wrong, whether real or imagined. Or sometimes we can have false guilt, unreasonable, you can't reason with it, inappropriate, the guilt is applied incorrectly, unhealthy, we make ourselves feel terrible or blaming ourselves. You know, excuse me, sometimes, um, you know, yeah, we can do things wrong, but sometimes, you know, you have, uh, as you said, that, that false guilt. So like, um, when me and my kids, mom, we decided, you know, I was like, I'm going back to school, um, you can come with me, um, or whatever like that. Um, she decided to go you know, to Cleveland, Ohio, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, I was like, you know what, God, I'm just going to do what you told me to do, you know, but I felt like I failed my children, you know, being a black father in the black community, you know what I'm saying? I felt that I was like, dang, you know, I felt like, I felt like I failed my family. You know, I was fine with, like I said, not being in a relationship with her anymore, you know what I'm saying? Cause we just have two different lifestyles. But, you know, saying it just the guilt and the shame. I'm just like, man, what are people going to think about me? You know, so what are people going to say? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so, you know, I went on, but God helped me with that because it was the best thing to do so that me and her can uh, co-parent uh, cordially. And also, too, you know, God is having me write a book about that, about how to co-parent and how to pray for your children's father or your children's mother even when you don't want to, or even when they're not being nice to you or at any point. Um, but Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and it comes short of the glory of God. You know, nobody's perfect, but sometimes we feel like in life when things happen, oh, God is mad at me. God doesn't love me anymore. You know, I don't deserve happiness or anything like that. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cause see, that's the thing we have to confess what's wrong. And one of the prayers should be Psalm 55, 51 and two, wash me clean, clean of my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Ask God to show you, you, you know, cause sometimes a person can be sinning so long that it becomes normal behavior. And we feel like, Oh, well, I'm so far down that God can't use me. Yes, God can. Proverbs 28 and 13. He who can conceals his sins will not prosper, but he who confesses and renounces them will find mercy. Jeremiah 3 and 13. Only acknowledge your guilt that you have rebelled against the Lord your God. You know, just saying, okay, God, like I was wrong. Help me to do better. You know, that's what God wants to cause a relationship. And no, nobody's perfect. But, you know, there's one thing to, to to struggle with some things. You know, sometimes we we struggle with that. I remember I used to uh, struggle back in the day, you know, saying before I became, uh, you know, celibate, you know, saying waiting and stuff like that, you know, and, you know, trying to find, uh, you know, my wife who God called me, you know, saying to be with. And, you know, sometimes you run into people and you think, Okay, well, maybe this person can be something like that, but you know what I'm saying when uh you know that was something I struggled with, and I was just you know asking God, and then when God shows you, and then you know he showed me how not to put myself in uh compromising situations and you know what I'm saying certain times at night and stuff like that where you know what I'm saying to be at home and stuff like that, but there was things that you know said that I struggled with it's a difference versus you doing it on purpose, you know what I'm saying there's a difference there. Jeremiah 3 and 30, 13, only acknowledge your guilt that you have rebelled against the Lord your God. So we read that again. Titus 2 and 14, he gave himself for us to redeem us from all the lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. And the reason why, you know, I, I tell uh, like certain testimonies and things that I struggle with, because I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, well, you know, here's here's Loki or his will. He never did anything wrong or, you know, something that I struggle with, you know, so that you can talk about. Because once you admit it, you know, said that the enemy can't use that because, you know, said you just say, you know what, God, there are some things that have happened that. It's just between you and God and that's it. But there's things that you can talk about, you know what I'm saying, to help others get through, you know what I'm saying? Because so you can hear like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? If, if Will got delivered from that, then I can get delivered from that as well too. <laughs> yes. So then we talk about shame, a painful feeling or of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. So we're talking about um, in the Bible, the rape of Tamar, 
you know, uh, second, third, second Samuel 13. Now David's son, Absalom had a beautiful sister named Tamar and Amnon, her half brother fell desperately in love with her. Now you can look at it and say something's wrong with that, but let's go ahead and go to it. Verse two, Amnon became so obsessed with Tamar that he became ill. So she was a virgin and Amnon thought he could never have her because that's when the, the consciousness was telling him, nah, listen, you wrong. You know, you can't have her. That's your half sister. Verse three, but Amnon had a very crafty friend. So, you know, you have them friends that, you know, you got to be careful listening to them and watch this. <laughs> It says, verse three, but Amnon had a very crafty friend, his cousin, Jonadab. Ooh, you got to be careful when you listen to certain people in your family or friends. So, but what happened was, um, you know, he convinced uh, Amnon to go ahead and act like he was sick. And then he told his father, and it, he told his father, um, you know, hey, send my sister over here to cook for me. I'm not feeling well. And so finally he convinced him. And then, you know, if you read the whole chapter, you know, basically what he did was he told uh, he told everybody to get out. And then he told Amnon, come over here and feed me. So she trying to feed him. And then he grabs her hand and she like, what are you doing? Like, stop, you know. So verse 12, no, my brother, she cried, do not be foolish. Don't do this to me. Such wicked things aren't done in Israel. Verse 13, where could I go in my shame? And you will be called one of the greatest fools in Israel. Please just speak to the king about it and he will let you marry me. Verse 14, but Amnon wouldn't listen to her. And since he was stronger than her, she was, he raped her. Then suddenly Amnon's love turned to hate and he hated her even more than he had loved her. Get out of here. He snarled at her. Now, this is interesting because you all of a sudden, excuse me, you wanted to get what you wanted. And then all of a sudden he hated her. And then he told he told the uh, servants, yo, get her out of here and lock the door behind. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so at that point, she had uh, one of those robes that, that that told that she was a virgin. So, but when she left, she had to rip it because she was no longer a virgin. Now, if you read it, uh, you know, her brother, her, her other brother snapped out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he ended up killing, uh, Amnon, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes things happen in life that, you know, we have no control of, but like she said, in my shame now, you know, she could have been like, oh, I feel shame because I'm this beautiful or whatever like that. But there's some things that happen in life that are, are not our fault, you know what I'm saying? Or how you take it to a certain, um, how you look at it. But we got to be careful, you know, like, and even with that, the situation of rape, you know what I'm saying? Some people feel like, oh, is it is it my fault? Or sometimes, you know, you have people that, um, like I said, like if they're wearing a certain outfit or something like that and they go out and then all of a sudden somebody raped them, is it their fault? You know what I'm saying? No, it is not because there are just some people, as you see, they listen to the wrong people and then they think and then look at it. all of a sudden he got what he wanted and then he didn't even care about it no more. But to leave you with this, Psalms 25 and 3, surely none who wait for you will be put to shame, but those who are faithless without cause will be disgraced. So God is saying that you'll never be put to shame if you wait on God, no matter what. That's why it says Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who are called according to the purpose of those that love him. So that means that if you love God, no matter what it is, it's going to all work out to your good, even if you think it's shame. Because see, what happens is when we have shame and guilt and stuff like that, we we will tend to reject what God has for us or what God wants us to have to be have a blessed life. But I believe... Um, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident is he who had begun a good work in you will finish it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And this is for a lot of everybody. Uh, Matthew 11 and 28, come to me, all ye who are very, who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. I had shared a post a couple of days ago and it said, God will not put more in you than you can bear, but what are you putting on yourself? And when I say that, you know, Psalms 55 and 22, it says, cast all your cares or burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. A lot of times, you know, when things happen in life, you know, we feel like it's, it's, it's our fault, but God don't want you to carry that shame. He don't want you to carry that guilt. And like I said, even if you did anything wrong, just ask God for forgiveness. And like I said, 
ask God to show you you. That's what it is. Because see, sometimes we let people, we worry about what they got to talk about, what they got to say about us or whatever like that. But don't worry about them. You know what I'm saying? Because it says once you are saved, you know, you become, you can become a new creature in Christ, you know, continue to strive for it. So last, last point, anything that happens that doesn't feel so good is designed to get you to go closer to God and not away from God. He loves you that much. Love y'all. God bless.